So this is a T valve, it's in the shape of a T. This is what directs your water flow from your skimmer and your drain. This is your pump, this just pulls and pushes water. This is your filter, this is what's gonna filter all the sand, the uh, dirt, anything that's in the bottom of the pool or gets caught in the skimmer, it's gonna come through here and get caught in here. And this is your chlorinator, that's what's gonna chlorinate the pool, okay, as far as chemicals go. So, back to the T-valve, 90% of the time it's gonna stay just like this. The only time it's in normal operation, the only time you're ever really gonna change it is when you wanna vacuum your pool. And you've had a, if you've had a swimming pool before, then you know that it hooks up in your skimmer box. Yep. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna come over here and close your drains when you wanna vacuum. Okay, and what that does is now instead of your pump pulling 50-50, now it's pulling 100% from your skimmer. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get a lot more suction for your vacuum. If it feels like it's too much and you're losing prime, you can always do it like that, 75-25. Or you can just try it at 50-50 and see how that works as far as suction. So, other than that though, 90% of the time, normal operation is gonna stay just like that. Reason being is your pump's gonna pull even from your skimmer and it's gonna pull from your drain. So it's gonna be pulling water from the bottom of your pool and it's gonna be pulling water from the top of your pool. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be split, so it's gonna come through your pump, push it through the filter, filter it out through the chlorinator and then back into your pool called the return. Your pump is pretty self-explanatory. Your water level is gonna be sitting right in here, okay? So you should be able to take this lid off without having to shut anything down. Um, if you ever wanna take this lid off, this lid off or that lid off, the pump has to be shut off. Okay. If not, then it'd be really hard to get off for one. Number two, it's going to blow it up in the air because of the amount of pressure that's on it. Okay. And you'll see warnings all over like right here. it will be warning you about do not try to take it off with the pump run in or there's a lot of pressure on it. All right. This is your filter and how this works. If you come back here, there's a pressure gauge and that's what's going to tell you when it's dirty. Right now inside here, when I open it up, I'll show you. It's like a big vacuum filter in here. It's like a big shop vac filter, mm -hmm. big cartridge filter. Okay, when you get your water filled and your, electri your electric run and you prime your pump, it's gonna jump anywhere from 15 to 20. That's what's pretty normal for these pumps. So what's gonna happen is over time, dirt's gonna start to collect all in there. And when that happens, the pressure's gonna rise because the water can't pass through there as easily as it once could. So when you get to about 25 to 30, that's when you're gonna wanna clean it. And to clean it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna shut your pump off, of course. You're gonna undo this air release valve, which is gonna take some of the pressure off. There's a big button back here. Just need to push that in. It allows this to spin freely. And then remember, this is gonna be filled with water, okay? You come right over here. Pop that off. And there's your cartridge. Filter. All right. To clean this, what you wanna do is you take it out, take it and stick it in something big enough to soak it in, um, like a trash can, a wheelbarrow, anything that you can soak this in overnight. Take Dawn dish detergent or anything with a degreaser, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna soak it overnight with that on there, it's gonna go ahead and lift a lot of this dirt off there for you. You're gonna take it out the next day, hose it off real good, hose it off inside, hose this off real good, and then it goes right back in. And the way it goes in, there's a hole right here, and that's gonna go right on that check valve. Okay, right here. If it doesn't go on there, then you won't be filtering correctly. Hmm. That goes on there, and this, like I said, this will be halfway filled with water, because half the water is gonna come out if you open it. Lid can go on anyway. There's a big O-ring, and that's what seals it. Always run it backwards so it doesn't cross thread, forward until it locks. All right, so now you've cleaned your filter, and you're ready to start up again. What you want to do is you want to keep this air release valve open, okay, because you're only going to be halfway full of water. You're going to go ahead and turn your pump on, and you're going to allow the water to fill and the air to escape out the top. When you see water shooting out everywhere, you're just going to go ahead and tighten this down, okay? And then you're ready to go again. All right, your chlorinator. This year, if you're not going to be swimming in it much, what we recommend is they give you a startup kit. All right. These are, there's chemicals in here that's called the mineral reservoir. It's gonna last you about one full pool season. Um, if you were to keep this in, like this year, and then turn your pump on, as soon as water gets in this, the whole thing's ruined. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that out and then I would just balance your chemicals like manually. Oh. You're only gonna have a week or two, probably max. Yeah. So you know, this is gonna cost you about a hundred bucks. So there's no point of wasting it, nope. okay? What happens is, is this is gonna go inside here. 
the normal operation, there's a slot right there. These chemicals right here are gonna work with these chemicals. These are chlorine tablets. This will last you all pool season, so when you start your pool up next year, that'll last you all year, okay? These are chlorine tablets. This will only last you about two weeks once you get your chemicals balanced. And how this goes down in is you're gonna pop this red tab, which I won't pop right now, it'll be all over. And then you just keep spinning it until it goes down in. And it would go all down in farther if the red tab was popped, okay? But what they do is this works together with this, and this is the gauge that controls it all, okay? The more I turn this this way, it allows more water to come up in here and pick up more chemicals. So what you're doing essentially is if you're going this way, you're raising the amount of chemicals you're putting in your water, all right? So right now we'll keep it just like that. Of course you also have an air release valve here, but we don't usually use that one because there won't be that much air in there. This is a wrench just to loosen it, not to tighten it. So make sure you tell your wife not to crank this down because if she does, you'll ruin that O-ring on there to be really hard to get off. All right. Okay. This is the Vaseline the O-ring or anything? They're all already Vaseline. We use silicone. Okay. It's right here. They give you a whole bottle. Okay. That way for next year. They're all O-ring fittings on there. Everything in the system comes apart. So it's real easy to get back together with this. Good. This is shock. And what you want to do is when you get your water, I wouldn't even recommend doing this year. When you get your water filled and your pump running, what you do is you cut this and you stick it in a, you dilute it in a five gallon bucket with water. Okay, don't pour this directly into the pool because if it sits on the bottom of your pool, it could stain your liner. So the five gallon bucket first with water and then dump it into your pool, preferably with the pump on. And usually if you dump it right over in that area where the water shoots out, it'll kind of spread it out for you. Ugh. Just like our old pool. Yeah, my boss tells everybody to do that about once a month and it'll, it'll keep your pool that much cleaner. So that's that. Like I said, you want to be real careful the first two weeks without anybody jumping in the pool because uh, after it's a considered a soft bottom swimming pool because it's a sand bottom. And what we do is we spread the sand, break it out, and then we spray it down with water. And then we have a yard roller that we use. We fill that up with water and that's how we roll it. That way we can walk on it without leaving any huge footprints. Okay, so what you want to do is over the course of two, one to two weeks, which if you guys are going to be in or you're not going to be in, that's, that water pressure is going to press that sand down another half of an inch and then it'll be like concrete. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, goodness, it's hot. All right, uh, winterization, because you're going to be doing that here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to want to do...